<laughs> the shadow knows. Well, hi, Steve here. The Bible has never lied to you. Men have continued to lie to you, but God's word doesn't even have one lie in it, contrary to what the godless try and claim. When is the day of the Lord? Is it today when the big eclipse comes over and blocks the sun? So when is the day of the Lord? No believer should have any doubt about it. The Apostle Paul told the believers in Thessalonia, he said, you have no need to have anything written to you, brothers, about the times and dates when this will happen, because you yourselves well know that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is so peaceful and secure, then sudden destruction will suddenly come upon them the way labor pains come on a pregnant woman and there's no way they will escape. But you, brothers, are not in the dark, so that the day should take you by surprise, like a thief. So what's happening today on this total solar eclipse? Well, my prediction is bad people will take advantage of this time to do bad things. While everybody's looking over here at the solar eclipse, they'll do bad things because bad people and lawless people do lawless things. My other prediction is that some people will foolishly try to look at this solar eclipse without any protective thing on their eyes and they will have damage caused to their eyes. So those are my big predictions. Jesus said the same thing. He says, but when that day and hour will come, no one knows, not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father. For the Son of Man's coming will be just as it was in the days of Noah. Back then, before the flood, people went on eating and drinking, taking wives and becoming wives right up till the day Noah entered the ark. And they didn't know what was happening until the flood came and swept them all away. It will be just like that when the Son of Man comes. In the second letter Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, he made it very clear that two things have to happen before the Lord comes back. Pay attention, because they have to happen before He comes back. In connection with the coming of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah and our gathering together to meet Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be easily shaken in your thinking or anxious because of a spirit or a spoken message or a letter supposedly from us claiming that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until after the apostasy has come and the man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. He will oppose himself to everything that people call a god or make an object of worship. He will put himself above them all so that he will sit in the temple of God and proclaim that he himself is God. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is restraining so that he may be revealed in his own time, for already this separating from Torah or God's teachings is at work secretly, but it will be secretly only until he who is restraining is out of the way. Then the one who embodies separation from God's instructions will be revealed, the one whom the Lord Yeshua will slay with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the glory of his coming. But he will judge the impoverished justly, and he will decide fairly for the humble of the land. He will strike the land with a rod from his mouth and slay the wicked with a breath from his lips. Isaiah and another Old Testament scripture we find in Job, at the breath from God, they perish. At a blast from his anger, they are consumed. This is what the pre-trib believers are going to hear. First, understand this. During the last days, scoffers will come following their own desires and asking, where is this promised coming of his? For our fathers have died and everything goes on just as it has since the beginning of creation. But wanting so much to be right about this, they overlook the fact that it was by God's word that long ago there were heavens 
And there was land which arose out of water and existed between the waters, and that by means of these things the world of that time was flooded with water and destroyed. It is by that same word that the present heavens and earth, having been preserved, are being kept for fire until the day of judgment, when ungodly people will be destroyed." However, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will melt and disintegrate, and the earth and everything in it will be burned up. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black as sackcloth, worn in mourning, and the full moon became blood red. The stars fell from the heaven to the earth, just as a fig tree drops its figs when shaken by a strong wind. Now, here's a scripture that you could make you wonder with this total eclipse that's happening today, but you have to put everything together in context because maybe this is happening and this is happening and this is happening, but what about this and this? Let's put it all in context. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black as sackcloth, worn in mourning, and the full moon became blood red. The stars fell from heaven to earth, just as a fig tree drops its figs when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the earth's kings and rulers, the generals, the rich and the mighty, indeed everyone, slave and free, hid himself in caves and among the rocks and the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one sitting on the throne and from the fury of the Lamb. For the great day of their fury has come. And who can stand? Another scripture that cannot happen yet. Why? Because... We have seen the apostasy, but we've not seen the man of sin yet. We don't know who that Antichrist is yet, for sure. We may have our ideas. But immediately following the trouble of those times, the sun will grow dark, the moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. This is what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 29, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. When we say this, we base it on the Lord's own word, Paul said. We who remain alive when the Lord comes will certainly not take precedence over those who have died. For the Lord himself will descend or come down from heaven with a rousing cry, with a call from one of the ruling angels and with God's shofar. Those who died united with the Messiah will be the first to rise. Then we who are left and still alive will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord." This cannot happen until the day of the Lord. Truly, it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. It's not a pre-tribulation anything. These things that have written in God's word must take place before the next thing can happen. Think about it.